Do I think trans kids exist? Yes. Do I think the research overwhelmingly suggests that kids who happen to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria after the years-long process of going through it all with a psychiatrist ought to get on puberty blockers if their parents and the doctor of the child feel it's appropriate? Yes, I do feel as though that is an appropriate decision to be made by those parties involved. I also believe that the overwhelming amount of research that has been done on this subject seems to point to the conclusion that puberty blockers for trans kids are safe, reversible, and effective at treating the acute symptoms of gender dysphoria. Now all of that's great, all of that's fine, but I did a video a while back talking about another side of this story, which is people who self-experiment with HRT under age. And there was this website called Otonoko Pharma, which I don't believe exists anymore, which many people claim was being used as a front to sell HRT to underage people. I have no idea if that was happening. It might have been. Underage people do in fact have the ability to buy things online. There were images, I don't know if they came from the actual packaging itself or if they were doctored in some way. I've had images that were doctored in the past of me saying things, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone did this with HRT packaging if they didn't like a certain company. Images that claimed keep out of the reach of parents, blah blah blah, uh, that in and of itself doesn't necessarily seem to me like it's, it's being signaled as something that uh, is being marketed for kids, it could just be a tongue-in-cheek joke. But on the same token, let's be real here, they made these same arguments about cigarette packaging in the past. So if that packaging is real, I'll give, I'll give the right a pass on the, you know, Otonoko Pharma did that. If it's real, I'll, okay, I'll say they did that. But what I want to talk about is the people who are self-experimenting in this way and how that relates to being a kid in general and the kind of experiments that we go through. Do I think more research should be done into this topic? Absolutely. But as far as informed medical decisions go, leave that up to the parents, leave that up to the doctors. They're going to know this stuff the best as anybody. But I was almost one of those kids who had taken HRT without the consent of a doctor or parent and without really understanding all of the ramifications. I was almost one of those kids, and the reason I was almost one of this one of those kids is because I happened to be in an anime-based Discord server growing up with certain people who were trans, whom I looked up to very much, and were older than me. They also happened to be people that I felt attracted to, not because they were trans, it didn't have anything to do with the genitalia, like gender bending aspect, that's kind of an offensive term to use here, but it, that probably would have been a term that I, at 14 and 15 years old, would have thought is appropriate. It wasn't because of anything like that. I just thought they looked like pretty girls, and that I was talking to pretty girls online, and they happened to be a little older than me. Now, I want to preface this story. Now, before I go into this story, I just want to preface this. These people are in no way representative of the trans community, and they are a minority of a minority of a minority. These people were not, were not representative of the people that are talked about in these political discussions. The fact that trans rights even have to be a political discussion in, a, in the first place is frankly disgusting, given that these are just people that exist. It's like when the rights of other minorities, such as black people or homosexuals, were considered political issues. It doesn't make any sense. But one day, these people will no longer be considered a political issue, and at that time, I will not have to give prefaces like this uh, when I tell a story like this. Because if I were to tell a story about a black person robbing me, I would not have to preface that with, 
oh, well, by the way, not all black people are robbers. I would not have to do that because you already know. <laughs> you already know that they're just individuals. But because this is such a heated topic of political interest at this particular moment in history, I have to preface this. So, as I was saying, I was in this server, and these people were very attractive to me. They were very charismatic to me. And I was this young, impressionable, impressionable boy without any friends, but they said that they were my friends. And at some point, I started looking back into my past and remembering how, because I liked having long hair growing up, and I didn't want to wear overalls, and even though I had worked the farm, I didn't really want to work the farm, I was more interested in some of the more human aspects of life that I felt like women got to enjoy in my community, such as showing their emotions, having conversations about them, cooking, housekeeping, things of this nature. The things that the men weren't allowed to do and would kind of scoff at and make fun of while the women did those things, it made that dynamic made me feel alone. Because in my community, it made me feel like for having long hair and being somewhat androgynous in terms of how I looked and having some interests that were gender neutral and also not having certain interests that were very stereotypically masculine, and as a result of that, I was ostracized and bullied and I felt like women had an advantage in the world because it almost felt like they were more human, like they were allowed to have a side of humanity that the rest of us, if we were male, weren't allowed to have. And I felt that dynamic. It didn't make me wish that I was a girl, but it made me wish for a world where I could have some of the things that the girls had that I wasn't allowed to have. This was also reflected in the parenting style of my father. My father harshly, violently punished me all throughout my childhood, whereas my sister, even though there's only a couple years of an age difference between us, he showered her with gifts. He would never yell at her up until she was the age of 15. He did not start yelling until she was 15, and he gave everything to her. He painted her room a special way, built all this different stuff for her. They were very, very attentive to my sister's feelings in all things, and she got whatever she wanted, no matter what it was. Me, on the other hand, it's not like I didn't have things, but they were things that I had to earn a lot of the time. Oh, I did I did get some gifts. I'm, I'm going to be real here. I got some. But in general, I had to earn things by working for them and saving my money, and a lot of the stuff that I bought happened to be old stuff. Now, it was great that I loved retro video games, and I lived in a community where people didn't understand the value of them because I could buy them up at thrift stores for pennies on the dollar and play the shit out of those. It was also good that I got some older consoles handed down. So I had stuff, and I had a Windows ME computer as well that had Windows XP put on it, and I was using Windows XP until, God, like 2017, 2018. Uh, well, I started using 7 in 2016, but my computer, I was off the e-machine by that point, but the XP computer I had couldn't run it. I know this has nothing to do with Otonoko Pharma, but I digress. Uh, I, I had mostly old stuff growing up, as I had to work for it, and we didn't have a lot of money. We were poor, but all of the money for like gifts and stuff usually went to my sister, and again, they were very sensitive and attentive to, to her feelings, whereas I was getting yelled at and violently abused. And so you can see the differences in how the, the genders were treated, and there was such a stark contrast when you would go to family dinners or when you would go to church or when you would just go outside. I mean, even when the plain people would come riding on their horses and in their buggies, you know, the horses with the blinders on, the women have different clothes than the men have. It's a distinct outfit that the Mennonites, Amish, and plain people, I mean, we had all of them, but they have distinct outfits from one another. So even they were distinct, and those folks were everywhere. But all of us regular folks, we were distinct as well. Except me, who was gender-wise somewhere in the middle by comparison to all these other people. And so I get online, 
and I start talking to these adult trans women who are from more gender diverse cities in different regions of the country where there's a little bit more tolerance for acting in a way that doesn't fit a strict stereotype and they suggest that because I'm androgynous and am experiencing some problems in my community that that actually means that I'm a girl and that I should transition. Now, there are some narratives about me online People have claimed that I only transitioned in 2020, but this was something that had happened when I was 15. Now, when I was 15, I was talking to these trans people online, and they were saying, you're transgender, and then I was just this impressionable kid who didn't know much and wanted to be accepted. I had exceedingly low self-esteem, terrible mental health problems, and multiple suicide attempts under my belt, and they were just like, hey, 14 and depressed? That means you're a girl now. You should go take HRT. And while I stopped short of taking HRT, I did start identifying as transgender. And once I started having doubts about it or questions about it, they threatened to not be my friend anymore. They said, we're not going to talk to you if you don't be a girl. These people had also pressured me in multiple ways with personal information that they had gathered on me. They pressured me to send images of myself. And thankfully, I did not fall to the pressure, but they were trying to get that out of me. They were trying to get images of me as, as an underage person. And this was after, years ago, having been raped by my cousin, having been molested by my uncle, molested in multiple ways by my stepbrother. Now online, people were trying to sol solicit this kind of content from me. It's like I can't get a break. But again, these people are not representative of the entire community. So I had what I think can accurately be described as confusion, and I also think I was experiencing what could accurately be described as grooming. And I went along with the story, I believed it, and I was telling it to everybody like it was true, and a lot of them believed it too. And then things start changing a little bit, I start to figure out what happened to me. And then I switch. And so a lot in a lot of my videos from 2018 and 2019, I'm not calling myself trans. In some of them from 2018 I am, but you know, around that period, things start to change. You know, around like 16 and 17, things start to change, and I'm not identifying like that online anymore. But then, you get to 2020, and then it just becomes a complete grift. Like, you get to 2020, and I'm 18 years old, and I'm just like, how can I find simps to siphon money out of into my pocket? because I am so scared of going out into the world and getting a job. I'm so scared of leaving my house, and my disability is all going to my dad, none of it's going to me, so I have no income. The only way I can get it is by taking HRT and getting people online to simp for me, and it actually worked. It also happened to be a way to, as someone who was starved for any affection from anybody at the time. I'm thankful to say that I'm not desperate like that anymore. It also happened to be an easy avenue by which I could receive affection from people, or at least I thought so. But the thing was, it always felt lonely and hollow every time I would receive that affection because it wasn't really me getting the affection. It was this character that I had crafted that I had to constantly adhere to that I had to constantly remember my own story in order to have every single thing that I said be consistent with that story. And so when I would get affection, I would feel more alone than I felt before because the affection was just shallow, it wasn't real. It wasn't for me. And that was 2020. Now that was when I came out to everybody. And then at the end of that year, once we started heading into 2021, I believe that was the year I actually got on HRT. Yeah, it was, because I stopped at the beginning of 2022. Uh, but I almost got on it at 15, and I was talking about my gender identity being diverse at 14 and 15, in part because of this gang of 
predators who happened to be transgender who were talking to me on Discord. And so you have people who talk to me, or not talk to me, but talk about me online, who present me as though I only did this in the advent of the events of 2020, when in actuality, if you go back through my channel's history, there's a storied history with the gender identity stuff. This has been a reoccurring theme since I was 15, at least publicly I had stated at 15. And if you look at the videos, at the receipts, that you can clearly see that. But you have obnoxious blowhards online attempting to tell the story in a different way. Um, it's very strange. <laughs> it's very strange the extent to which people are obsessed with going after me for having engaged in this behavior at some point. Because I can get it with the grifting, like, if you want to go after me and attempt to lie- well, it wouldn't be libel because it would just be criticism. Libel has to be fake. If you wanted to go after me and criticize me for grifting and trying to get semps in the events of 2020, I can understand that because that was wrong, and I've been attempting to rectify that ever since and to be a better person. But, like, <laughs> if you're just straight up going out there and ignoring all of the past context for your own libelous intentions, that's kind of fucked up. But you have certain people online who, who are attempting to do that. And I think if I had access to Otonoko Pharma at the time and knew about it when I was 14 or 15, I don't know, maybe, maybe I would have used it. I had looked at all these other websites and I didn't want to use them because they make you sign when you have to deliver, and I was too scared to do that. But I was so simultaneously scared of and enthralled by these older people who were very attractive and very charismatic that I sort of let them lead me around on a leash. Uh, that that sounds terrible given the context that I just gave. Oh my god. Uh, I, uh, I meant that metaphorically. Um, I, it, I sort of let them lead me around and that's not a time in my life that I like to think about or remember or engage with in any way. But I know if I had access to Otonoko Pharma, that would have been an unfortunate, I would have been an unfortunate casualty of what they're doing. And I think that there are probably a few other edge cases out there that are in Discord servers, and then these older people convince them to get on this stuff, and it's just as a some sort of sexual deviant scheme uh, that they're trying to do. I'm sure that if it happened to me, it had to have happened to somebody else. It had to have happened to somebody else. And I can understand not wanting to talk to me after the events of 2020, because again, lying about being trans to get money from people is fucked up. Like, that's just fucked up. And I own up to that. I own it. You know, I did something very wrong with that. But it was also fucked up what happened to me years before that. Not that that justifies the events of 2020. Again, I can understand being mad at me about that and not wanting to be my friend on the basis of me having lied. But if you just, like, don't want to be my friend because you're attempting to manipulate me into behaving a particular way to fulfill your sexual fantasy, you should be in jail. And those people should be in jail right now. Maybe some of them are. I think, unfortunately, they're walking free. And there are other individuals who didn't even go as far as asking me about the lying after the events of 2020 just solely on the basis that I detransitioned in 2022, they stopped being friends with me. They said, we're not going to talk to you more because you're a rapper and you're lying to yourself and you, you're not going to hang with the cool kids anymore, so we're not allowed to talk to you. That's not literally what they said. I'm sort of straw manning them, but they blamed whatever distaste they had for me on that. Now, maybe there was something about my behavior Maybe there was something else I was doing that was wrong, and that was an easy scapegoat that was just easy to articulate. But there were several people who said, we're not going to talk to you un unless you keep going through with this trans thing. We're not going to be your friend. And with those individuals, it, it almost felt like a cult, like you're in a cult. And I think that's because it's become so politicized. Rather than being a civil rights issue like the way it should be, it's considered a political issue. And so... 
when someone transitions and then just realizes that they did it for the wrong reasons and that it's not for them or whatever it makes the other person feel insecure about themselves because then they think i've had doubts about myself too what if i'm like this oh no when in reality it's like no you exist you're just yourself you know people can modify their bodies in any way they want they can be whoever they want to be but because it's considered this political issue that not only is there this like air of insecurity surrounding the entire topic amongst people whom the the discourse affects the most there's an air of insecurity that stems from that but there's also an air of insecurity uh that that stems from seeing someone who doubted themselves make a different decision than you you know but uh, but i really do think that if this were not treated as a political issue nobody would have had a problem with me detransitioning nobody would have said that shit in the case of those predators that's obviously different their intentions it didn't have anything to do with gender or trans issues those people were just fucked up in the head and they were trying to do something heinous they were trying to be menaces to society but i think an unfortunate casualty of otonoko pharma is people like in the circumstances that i was in at that age it's an unfortunate casualty i don't know how else to put it but at the same time you know i was experimenting with a lot of other stuff at around that age add meds in a recreational type way cigarettes booze weed a little bit later all that type of stuff and i turned out fine like kids are just going to be kids and they're going to modify their body they're going to do things that will have an impact on them later in life that may have a permanent impact on them i'm sure it altered my brain development in some way to do some of the stuff that i did growing up but i did it anyway because kids are going to be kids and you can't judge too harshly when kids are kids they do things that you know they're not supposed to do and you can as an adult say well hey maybe you should think about that maybe you should have some adults involved and try to work through this through the proper channels but that can only go so so far you know wisdom often falls on deaf ears when we're talking about the young you know youth is wasted on the young so kids are going to be kids they're going to do their thing uh i can't judge too harshly for for them taking things but I do think some of them run the risk. If they're from a broken home, if they're from a very isolated area, if they're very autistic like I am, if they don't have any friends and they're isolated, you know, cuz I was homeschooled in a very rural religious community. If you're if you're very isolated, you can be preyed upon by certain predators who use this gender stuff as a pretext to get some sort of sexual satisfaction out of your demise and that's a heinous thing it doesn't happen often i don't think but i think this had to have happened to somebody else this had to have happened to somebody else cuz i can't be the only one out there who's had this experience and so if you're around that age and you're watching this video look out although if you're anything like i was you probably won't